Greetings and welcome to lesson R7. We'll be discussing how to calculate uh, using exponents, order of operations and why that's so important, as well as uh, different types of averages. When starting anything relatively new in math, we do need to talk about the language that we're going to use, so new vocabulary that you might hear me say. An exponent is a whole number that indicates how many times the base is to be used as a factor. Now, base is usually the big number in the issue, in the problem, and the exponent is raised, and we even say that it's raised to the fourth power. It's a little bit written a little bit higher than the base, so we know there's something happening there. For example, three to the second power that's really a shorthand way of saying 3 times 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. So 3 to the second power will equal 9. Likewise, with the example of 5 to the second power, so the base is 5, and we raise that to the exponent of 2, that's just a shorthand way of saying 5 times 5 equals 25. No, that is not 5 times 2. It is 5 times 5. You multiply it twice. So let's take uh, these examples. We have 3 squared, pardon me, 3 squared, that's another way of saying it, power of 2, 3 to the third power, and 2 to the fourth power. In the first example, the base is 3, and the exponent is 2. In the second example, the base is 3, and the exponent is also 3. In the third example, 2 is our base, and 4 is our exponent. And we have a couple of special names for when we raise it to the second power, as well as the third power. If we raise it to the second power, it's called squared. So the first example is 3 squared. When the exponent is a 3, it's the third power, but we can also say it's being cubed. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on in another lecture of why those names came about. I want to walk through a couple more examples. 3 squared. Again, if I say squared, that's to the second power. If I expand that, it's going to be 3 times 3, and 3 times 3 is 9. The second example is 4 squared, so if I write that out, it's going to be 4 times 4, which 4 times 4 is 16, so 4 squared is 16. 3 cubed, or to the third power, I'm going to write 3 3 times, 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, so my answer will be 27. 2 to the 4th, well that means I'm going to write out 2 4 times. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is an 8, times another 2 is a 16. Now we also need to consider what if it's raised to the first power? And what if it's raised to the zero power? I'm going to give you a definition here. If we raise any number to the first power, that means I just have one of them. And therefore, it's just that number. So any number raised to the first power is just going to be that same number. So 2 to the first is 2. 10 to the first is 10. And then by definition, if we raise it to the zero power, any number to the zero power except zero, it's going to be one. That's our definition, just accept it as truth. Let's talk about order of operations. Order of operations is extremely important in math. It gives us the guideline on how everyone does a particular problem. If I don't do it in this order, my answer might not match up with your answer, and that's a big problem in math. If we all follow the same exact rules, then we're going to 
or we should, if all of our math is correct, we should get the same um, answer that we're expecting. So the order of operations, you could remember it by PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-S, PEMDAS. A lot of people say, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to remember it, or some other mnemonic, but PEMDAS usually works for me. P stands for parentheses, E stands for exponents, M stands for multiplication, D stands for division, A stands for addition, and the S is for subtraction. Now we do need to know why we do it in this order. Um, again, it's so everybody gets the expected outcome. We work with the the expressions in the parentheses first. And although I have left to right, there might be several parentheses in a line. Uh, there might also be parentheses within parentheses within parentheses. In the case where the parentheses are inside the parentheses, we do the innermost parentheses first and then work out from there. If I have a list of parentheses, I work from left to right. The second I need to simplify any numbers with exponents, and I work from left to right with that. I do all the multiplication and division. So multiplication and division are at the same level. And if I have 2 times 4 divided by 5, I'm going to do it in that order all at the, uh, all at the same time frame. I'll go from left to right. And then addition and subtraction. Those are also at the same level of hierarchy, if you think of it like that. Uh, and you're going to also do those from left to right. I have an example here, 4 plus 5 times 2. In my order of operations, multiplication is higher than addition. So I do the multiplication first. So I would do the 5 times 2 first, which is 10. My problem becomes 4 plus 10. And 4 plus 10 is 14. Let's try another problem. 4 times 8 minus 2 times 6. Now here's the thing. Here are all my operations. I have a multiplication, I have a multiplication, I have a subtraction. Both of those multiplications rank higher than a subtraction. So I'm going to do those multiplications first, and I'm going to do them from the left to the right. So 4 times 8 is 32, 2 times 6 is 12. That becomes our new problem of 32 minus 12. Now I can do the subtraction, 32 minus 12 is 20. Our next example has parentheses, addition, and subtraction. And again, I'm going to do the whatever's in the parentheses first, that's the topmost, and then addition and subtraction come next. So the first thing I do is 7 minus 1. 7 minus 1 is 6. So whatever's in the parentheses I replace with a 6. My problem becomes 5 plus 2 times 6. There is an implied multiplication there. Multiplication is higher than addition, so I do the multiplication first. 2 times 6 is 12, so now my problem becomes 5 plus 12. And 5 plus 12 equals 17. In the next example, there's a lot going on here. So I'm going to walk it through one at a time, a little bit at a time. I have multiplication. I have exponents. I have addition. I have a division. I have another exponent. And I have subtraction. Now, P-E-M-P-E-M-D-A-S. P comes first. I have no parentheses. I'm done with parentheses. E for exponents. I need to do my exponents first from left to right. So I have my first exponent is 2 cubed. So 2 cubed is really 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. My second exponent is uh, 3 squared, which is 3 times 3, which is 9. So both of those values I can replace with the 8 and with the 9. Now, my next step, I'm done with all the exponents. 
multiplication division from left from left to right. So let me get rid of some of my markings here for you. I have a multiplication. Oops, that's a little dark. We have a multiplication and we have a division. So again, I'm going to just go from left to right. 9 times 8 is 72 and 36 divided by 9 is 4. So in my problem, I'm going to replace this 9 times 8 and the 36 divided by 9 by my 72 and my 4 that I got respectively. My problem becomes 72 plus 4 minus 8. Now I'm left with adding and subtracting. That's it, right? Adding and subtracting. Left to right. So the first thing I do is the 72 plus 4, which is 76. I replace the 72 plus 4 with the 76. Now my problem becomes 76 minus 8. And our final solution after all those steps is 68. If I didn't follow order of operation, I would have gotten a completely different answer and that's not good. One of the, I think, most difficult things about math can be where do I get started? So for order of operation, you at least want to figure out what mathematical operations are going on. Let's try another problem, and I'm going to try and mark it up very carefully with I have multiplication going on, I have exponents going on, and I have addition going on here. I have to think about, in my order of operations, what do I do first, what do I do next, what do I do next? Exponents, multiplication, addition. So I'm going to do all of the exponents first, left to right, then the multiplication, then the addition. So 2 cubed is going to become 8. 4 squared becomes 16. Now I work with the individual multiplication. 3 times 8 is 24. And 5 times 16 is 80. And the final thing that I do is addition. 24 plus 80 is 104. Always analyze your problem before you get started. In our next equation, we have two parentheses, and then we have some addition and subtraction. I do the parentheses first. Whatever is in the parentheses, that's what I'm going to do first. The first parentheses becomes a 4. The second parentheses becomes a 2, uh, a 10. In between the two parentheses, there was also an implied multiplication. So 4 times 10 is 40. In our next example, 5 plus 2 times the quantity, 9 minus 2 times the quantity, 4 minus 1. Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. We start with our parentheses and we work from the inside out in this case. So the first thing we want to do is 4 minus 1. And 4 minus 1 is 3. Now my problem is 5 plus 2 times the quantity, 9 minus 2 times 3. I'm still working on the inside of this parentheses, this bracket. And because I have some implied multiplication there, my multiplication is higher than my subtraction. So I do multiplication first. So 2 times 3 is 6. 
Now I'm going to do the 9 minus 6, which is 3. I'm left with 5 plus 2 times 3. Well, again, multiplication is higher than addition, so I do multiplication first. 2 times 3 is 6. And now I'm down to my last uh, operation, and that is addition. 5 plus 6 is 11. All right, so how do you translate written words into math symbols? There's a couple of things that have helped me, so I'm going to try and pass those along to you. Um, and I've written a few examples to try and do that, and I've already given the solution, but I want to work through the words to see if we can make sense of all of these things. First example, 5 times the sum of 3 and 8. Now, I need to know a couple of things. Times means multiplication. So if I wanted to, I could replace that word with the symbol of multiplication. So I'm just going to write an x right over times because that's multiplication. So it's going to be 5 multiplied to something. And that something is the sum of 3 and 8. Now, the sum of 3 and 8, that's not too bad. I'm looking for some keywords. Here's one of my keywords, sum. And my other keyword yeah, is and. Sum tells me what the operation is. The and tells me where I'm going to put it. And hopefully this is making sense. Sum tells me it's addition. And means that I'm going to put it right here. Tiny bit of change here. Alright. Now I can get rid of all of the words except it is the sum of 3 and 8. I have to put some parentheses there. Now if I drop all the words, it becomes 5 times the quantity 3 plus 8. Now let's try this again with the second problem. And I'm going to erase all my markings for the first one just so it's a little bit cleaner. Twice the difference of 4 and 3. When you see twice, you should immediately say times 2. Whatever it is, is going to be times 2. So twice becomes 2 with the multiplication symbol. 2 times what? Okay, I'm looking for those key words again. The difference and. Difference means subtraction. And tells me where the symbol goes. So I change that into a subtraction. And then whatever is on the left-hand side of the subtract symbol, what's ever on the right-hand side, I have to group in a parenthesis. See how this is kind of building? At this point, I have no more words to deal with. That's my solution. 2 times the quantity 4 minus 3. Let's try another one. I hope this, is, this process that I'm working with makes sense. Let's try this again. 6 added to 7 times the sum of 5 and 6. Well, 6 added to, the good thing is, is um, addition works in any order. So as soon as I see added to, that becomes a big addition symbol. 7 times, well, in the olden days, we called multiplication times. So I'm just going to change the times to 
the multiplication symbol. And now I have to deal with the sum of 5 and 6. Remember, I'm looking for those keywords. The sum is addition, and and tells me where I put the addition sign. So, here's my addition sign. Whatever's to the left of the addition sign, I have to group with whatever what's in the right of the addition sign. Now all my words are gone. What am I left with? 6 plus 7 times the quantity 5 plus 6. Okay. Is this, I hope this is starting to make a little sense. At least this is how I get rid of all the words and get down to the math stuff. Okay, our next one. The sum, remember our keyword, the sum of 4 times 5 and, I was just looking for my and, 8 times 9. All right, the sum is my operation. The and tells me where I put it. So here's my operation. Whatever's to the left, I have to make sure I've grouped. And whatever's to the right, I have to make sure that I've grouped it. But now I have to look, what's on the left? Well, 4 times 5 is on the left, and 8 times 9 is on the right. I can immediately replace the times with a multiplication symbol. But I have to be very careful here, because I'm only multiplying 4 times 5. So I have to put that in a little parenthesis. We'll say there's a second parenthesis in here. And then, likewise, on the left-hand side, 8 times 9, I can replace the times. But what is happening to the times? Just the 8 and 9. So I have to put parentheses around that. And you'll see my final solution doesn't have the big parentheses out. It's just a good habit to get into. If you see a keyword like sum, difference, you find that and, whatever's on to the left, whatever's to the right, you put parentheses around it. So now I have the quantity, 4 times 5, plus the quantity, 8 times 9. I know these get complicated very quickly. Alrighty. 3 subtracted from the quotient of 10 and 2. Now, when we have a subtracted from, that's really confusing because a subtracted from, whatever's on the left actually gets put on the right hand side of the subtract symbol. And then what's ever on the left hand side gets put on the, well, whatever's on the left gets put on the right, whatever's on the right gets put on the left. The subtracted from is our weird one. I didn't want to make it all that easy on you. So I'm not going to work with that yet. I'm going to deal with my other keyword of quotient. I'm going to find my and. Quotient means division. So wherever I see the and, I'm going to put my division marker there. I got to, I have to, I need to figure out what's on the left of the division symbol, what's on the right of the division symbol, put it in parentheses. All right, now the only thing I have to work up with is that horrible subtracted from business. What that means is you take the three, you put it in back, and you put a subtract there. So our final answer for this one is the quantity 10 divided by 2 minus 3. It's that subtracted from that gets us every single time, it seems like. Let's change gears here a little bit and talk about average. We have a couple of operations that mean a type of average. When somebody says average, 
they actually are talking about in math terms, it would be called the mean. It's the arithmetic mean. And that's typically what people think of as average. How you calculate it is you have a set of numbers that you're working with. You have a set of data. You take those numbers, you add them all up, and then you count how many numbers you have, and that's the value you divide it by. For example, I have firefighters' wages up here. I have five values. One, two, three, four, five. That's what I'm going to divide by, five. I'm going to add all those values up. That becomes my numerator. Then the quantity of how many I have becomes my denominator, and then I do that math. So if I add all the values up, 59,687, 60,880 plus 62,098 plus 63,651 plus 56,879. I add all the th values up. I get that total of 312,195. Now I'm going to divide it by how many of them I had, which were five. So the average is 62,439, which means the average firefighter wage is 62,439. Some people are going to get paid more, some people are going to get paid less. The arithmetic mean has um, really great uses for it, but sometimes, sometimes it's not really the best way of looking so we have another way of looking at information, and this is called the median. And you may have heard this occasionally. It will say the median wage for a particular city is 50000 That That is not the same thing as the mean. It's not the same thing as the mean, the arithmetic mean, which is our kind of standard when we just throw out the word average. That's the average. The median, what you do is you write all of your values down from smallest to largest. And if there's an odd number of values, that's perfect. That's great. There's not much I have to do except I find the very middle value. That is our median. For our example for the firefighters, I write it from the smallest value to the largest value. So 59,687, 60,880, 62,098, 63,000. 651 and 65,879. I have five values. Perfect. That's an odd number of values. So I just start working and from each end and I find the middle value. The middle value is our median. So why is this so important to have this? If you can imagine, you have 10,000 people living in your neighborhood. And 9,999 of them make $23,000 a year. One person in your neighborhood makes $3 trillion. What happens is if you did the mean, the average, you add all the $23,000 up, you add that one $3 trillion person, and what happens is that if you said, average yearly wage for that neighborhood, it's going to be something like in the high hundred millions. Well, it's not accurate. I mean, most everybody except one person makes $23,000. So it makes sense to have this option of doing this median. You write out all the values, you find the middle one, which would be $23,000, and the median um, salary, annual salary, which is a more realistic view of that neighborhood versus that one person making all that money. So median, a lot of government um, data will talk about the median. Now that works great if you have an odd number of values like we did with our five firefighter. But what happens if you have an even number? 